All right, let's get started. Hey, everyone, thank you for joining us and welcome to today's webinar. This is an exciting one and something many of us have been keeping a close eye on. Wi-Fi 6, a new cloud standard and how, we, how to greatly improve your network. We're gonna to see today how this versatile solution applies to every environment from a design, scalability, implementation, and management perspective. As well, we're gonna cover how we made it easy to secure and receive a portion of the $800 billion of free government money available to you today, while that's still available. My name is Frank DiCarlo with BCL Solutions, and joining me today is Doug Evans and Hans Hahner from Comscope. It's great to have you both here, thanks. Good to be here, thank you. BCL Solutions is extremely excited to announce our re recent partnership with Comscope. You guys have been terrific. The ongoing demand for our collective service and product offerings since partner partnering has been terrific. For those of you on the webinar today that aren't aware of BCL Solutions, first off, welcome. If you haven't worked with us before, I'm going to spend a few minutes speaking on the company's behalf, but we're all anxious to hear, uh, to, we're all anxious to get to the meat of the webinar. So, First, we'll get started with a brief overview of PCL and its IT solutions, followed by Doug, who will be speaking and demonstrating the benefits of Wi-Fi 6, and then Hans, who will be talking about the exciting opportunities in IT government grant funding. We'll save some time at the end for questions, so please don't hesitate to enter them by clicking on the Q&A button here on this platform. So with that, let's get started. PCL Solutions, we're based in New Jersey. And our mission, quite simply, is to provide end-to-end -end IT support to better manage, innovate, and scale business objectives and creative infrastructures. We complement existing IT staff so that our clients slash partners can concentrate on their core competencies. IT does not have to be complex. And if there's anything we hear over and over again is how well our teams work with existing IT staff so that everybody wins. Our system engineers and staff maintain up-to-date knowledge about the latest technological solutions and have an exceptional advantage in providing the skills to address every IT and workflow situation. We make complex IT simple. We know that every business has unique needs and challenges and for obvious reasons, created specific virtual teams to cater to the working from home. Remote access is more important than ever whether that falls in line with our workstation monitoring systems for individual desktops and its users, or if it falls under our critical systems monitoring that specifically closely observes servers and networks. It's important to us and to our clients that everything is running smoothly with little hiccup. So again, our partners can focus on their business and core competencies. Our mission is to provide end-to-end -end IT support to better manage, innovate, and scale business objectives and creative infrastructures. PCL Solutions provides worry T IT management and advisory services to grow your business and help improve time to market. The quality of our service is unmatched in the New York and Metro New Jersey metropolitan area, and we employ a tailored approach by studying businesses' frameworks, doing needs assessments, practicing regular governance, and keeping up to date with what our clients' challenges are and working together to resolve them and move forward powerfully. Leveraging our knowledge along the way and our expertise, maximize the performance of our clients' networks and creative workflows. Managed services are rapidly replacing traditional information technology. Managed services is the practice of outsourcing the responsibility for maintaining and anticipating the need for a range of IT processes and functions in order to improve operations and cut expenses. The question for your organization may be, how much is your internal IT staff working in the business rather than working on the business? Are you and your staff increasingly being reactive rather than proactive when it comes to IT concerns? We excel in our customer support and make sure everything is running smoothly. Happy employees make for better business and enhance productivity. And that's a tangible, tangible business return on investment. One of PCL's newest focuses and in increasing, uh, increasingly in demand is enhanced security and ransomware solutions. It's predicted that ransomware costs 
will exceed 20 billion over the next year. That's an alarming statistic and growing concern. To stay ahead of cyber attacks, we have to evolve faster than they do. BCL Solutions now offers the next generation of cybersecurity powered by AI and built to protect against any attack. It's designed to prevent, stop, and reverse known and unknown threats all in real time. We now deliver a security platform that autonomously prevents, detects, and responds. We defeat attacks every second of every day, making complex IT simple. Just a few more points I uh, just wanted to bring to your attention regarding PCL. Uh, we have exceptional customer support alongside our top tier IT infrastructure. Our system engineers and staff are not only some of the best in the business, but in the metropolitan area. The company has been around for 20 years, but to get, together we have over 75 years of experience. We possess three world-class co-locations, data centers that communicate all over the US and globally. We provide managed private and co-location hosting. I highly recommend that you request a tour and see our facilities. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak about a bit about PCL, but it's time to get to the main reason why we're here today. We'll learn more about Wi-Fi 6 and how to secure some government grant money and everything that uh, our partnership with Ruckus and Comscope has to offer. So at this point, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Doug, and uh, welcome. Okay, thank you, Frank. Okay, so let me throw some big numbers at you. 22 billion, that's the estimated number of devices worldwide that connect to a wireless LAN. 5 billion, that's the estimated number of Wi-Fi 6 devices that will be shipped by 2025. So let me put that in perspective. If you were able to save $10,000 a day, it would take you 1,370 years to accumulate $5 billion. A billion seconds ago, it was 1959. We've come a long way from our humble beginnings in the wireless world. If you think about it, we had 802.11b back in 1999 with its shared 11 megabit rates. The iPhone wasn't even introduced until 2007. So in those early years, Wi-Fi was just an add-on perhaps to provide internet access to visitors or guests or connect two buildings across the parking lot. Today, the wireless network is the network with the wired switches in a supporting role. Wi-Fi is quickly becoming the only connectivity option for most users. So as more use cases came into being, like the iPhone, wireless grew rapidly. And because of this, the early focus was on increasing speed. For 802.11n, the maximum theoretical speed was 150 megabits per second. Wi-Fi 5 increased this to a theoretical speed of 866 megabits per second, over six times as fast. With the Wi-Fi 6 standard, the greater focus has been on efficiency, optimization, and throughput, not just speed, though these efficiencies will increase the speed as well into the gigabit range. Wi-Fi 6 aims to improve efficiency in several ways to give you consistently higher real-world performance than you would get with Wi-Fi 5 and provide better coverage, reliability, more clients, and applications. So what does Wi-Fi 6 bring to the table? So here are some of the main features that Wi-Fi 6 brings. And of course, we, we don't have the time to delve uh, deeply into each one of these. But uh, the OFDMA and multi-user MIMO techniques were actually leveraged from the cellular world. Basically, basically, what they do is they allow multiple users to be served simultaneously instead of the old way of one packet, one person at a time, which, of course, increases network capacity. The additional features here shown were dramatically improved throughput, capacity, and reliability through added optimization and efficiencies. So fact or fiction, all access points are created equal. There's a belief out there that access points, especially with the advent of Wi-Fi 6, are basically the same as long as they meet the standard. 
And while it's true that the Wi-Fi Alliance certifies the specific standards, the fact is that not all teachers, but all, not all key features are mandatory. In fact, many, if not all the RF optimization features are considered optional. So there's something called the reference design. Basically the chip manufacturers create chips with a mandatory feature set called out by the standard. A manufacturer then can put a chip on a circuit board, add some firmware, a logo, plastic cover, and they have a Wi-Fi 6 access point. At Ruckus, we go above and beyond the standard. We take the reference design, add a dual core CPU for our network services and drivers, as well as a proprietary CPU with our custom firmware. At Ruckus, we have over 100 patents providing custom hardware, firmware, and features that go above and beyond the standard. So a prime example uh, is our patented BeamFlex technology. And the Ruckus brand was actually built on BeamFlex. As you can see on the left are your basic omnidirectional access points. Displayed on the right is the BeamFlex antenna arrays that are built into all of our access points. BeamFlex antennas are specialized antennas, and depending on which model you have, they can create hundreds to thousands of different patterns. And these antenna patterns are changed, are changed with every packet and focused directly at the receiving client. An omnidirectional antenna is like a light bulb in a room. So the energy is broadcast around the room and the strength diminishes the further it goes. But if you focus the energy, in the case of the light by using like a high powered flashlight, the light will be brighter and travel further. The same with RF and wireless. With B-Flex, by focusing the antenna pattern directly toward the receiver, the signal is stronger and travels further. So again, with B-Flex antennas, we have stronger Wi-Fi signals at longer ranges, more users per access point, and it works with all client devices, not just Wi-Fi 6. Now, Wi-Fi channels are often compared to highway lanes. So what if a wireless LAN could uh, listen and automatically reroute traffic to a less congested lane? Well, that's no big deal because everybody does that. A channel reaches a congestion threshold, so it goes and seeks a less congested channel to switch to. But what if the system were intelligent enough to predict which lane or channel uh, is the fastest or best based on real-time and historical data? And that would be Ruckus's patented channel fly. So think of channel fly as the, the Waze GPS application. It constantly analyzes the environment. And if it detects a traffic jam congestion, it already knows which alternate route or channel to switch to. So this is our current Wi-Fi 6 application portfolio and we are continuing to add more models. So as you can see, we have an access point to meet just about any requirement from high-end ultra high density, uh, as in our R850, to our workhorse mid-range access points, entry level, specialty, and of course we have outdoor access points as well. For example, let's take the H550, which is very popular in the hospitality, MDU, and uh, college dorm space. It is designed to mount on a single gang wall box or on the wall. It's also a five port switch. So it has an uplink port coming in the back, and you have four gigabit ethernet ports on the bottom. If you power this access point with PoE plus or better, one of those ports can be PoE out. So you can connect and power an additional device for an IP telephone, for example. What's notable about the outdoor access point T750 is that access point has an SFP plus interface, which means you can run fiber to this access point and deploy it out much, much further. Of course, you need to power it locally, but the access point also has a PoE out port, so you can add an additional access point or camera or other device as well. And of course, we have our mid-range workhorse access points like R550s and R650s. And I'll mention here that all of our Wi-Fi 6 access points are IoT, Internet of Things, ready, in that they have integrated Zigbee and BLE radios, as well as a USB interface to add additional types. The beauty in this is instead of mounting separate IoT gateways and cables, you mount one device, and though the radios are totally separate, 
They share the ethernet connection and a single ethernet port on your switch. So of course we need to be able to manage our access points as well as our ethernet switches. And that brings us to our network controller platforms. So we have our high-end enterprise solution in the smart zone platform, which is available as a, an appliance or a virtual instance. And at the other end, we have our small business model with the Unleashed platform. However, today's topic is the cloud, so we will focus on the Ruckus Cloud platform. But first, uh, I can't do justice to the following Ruckus Software as a Service cloud platforms with a, just a few slides. I invite you to schedule a live demonstration with PCL Solutions and Ruckus to fully appreciate these powerful applications. So why cloud managed networking? Well, because IT just doesn't have the time. Many IT organizations just don't have the time to keep doing things that a traditional approach requires and be able to spend time on the strategic projects that would really make a difference in their organizations. That's why we built Ruckus Cloud. It enables you to manage your wired and wireless networks from the cloud. Now, since this platform resides in the cloud, scalability is basically unlimited. It is managed by Ruckus, therefore firmware upgrades and patches are done automatically. It offers the flexibility of the cloud and is also perfect for organizations with numerous locations because you can manage it from a single site. Ruckus Cloud is based on our enterprise smart zone platform. We've taken the chief features and functions and put it into an easy to use user interface. At a glance, you can see the status and makeup of your network. You can place devices on a floor plan. And again, you can provision, manage both wired and wireless devices from the Ruckus Cloud. Lean IT, department, lean IT departments can manage their network from the cloud via the web interface or a mobile application from anywhere at any time. One cool thing about the mobile app is that you can add an access point or switch by scanning the barcode on the back of the access point or switch and it'll add it to your cloud network. Now, Ruckus Analytics is a cloud service for network intelligence and service assurance. It's powered by machine learning and artificial intelligence. It gives IT comprehensive visibility into network operations. It accelerates troubleshooting and helps IT teams meet their network SLAs. It is available as an add-on to our smart zone and our cloud platforms. It automatically detects and prioritizes incidences. It has a powerful client troubleshooting tool, and it has a tremendous amount of information and reporting features. The dashboard displays and prioritizes incidences, so you can act on them accordingly. Incidents are ranked from P1, severe, to P4, informational. Automatic notification and integration with help desk ticketing solutions like ServiceNow is also available. You can then drill down on a particular incident and the tool will show you what areas may be affected, such as a wireless LAN or an access point or a device. And then the insight tools shown at the upper right corner here will provide a possible root cause as well as recommended actions to fix the problem, dramatically saving time and effort. And then client troubleshooting captures failures for a specific client. You can drill down through the incidents or you can search by the client name or MAC address. It shows you the specific operating system type, the access point radio and SSID the client is connected to and the failure reason. The diagram represents a traffic flow, almost like a packet capture diagram and exactly where the issue occurred so that within a minute or two, you can pinpoint the problem. The health dashboard at a glance, you can see the status of your network and your service level agreements. And it contains over 15 curator reports with all sorts of, of information about your network. And then the deep data explorer is the data mining tool because Ruckus Analytics keeps 12 months of data of your, for your network. So this tool allows you to take that data and create your own reports and dashboards and trend analysis. So another cloud application from Ruckus is our cloud path enrollment system, 
which is available as a cloud application or a, a, a virtual instance on-prem. It streamlines network onboarding for employees, for students, for bring your own devices, company devices. It increases security, gives you power to define and manage policies for role-based access, and it dramatically reduces help desk tickets related to network access. You can set up a self-service portal on day one. On day two, the users automatically connect with their appropriate role-based policies. So before we wrap up the uh, presentation, I'd like to address the switch infrastructure. So what do switches have to do with Wi-Fi 6? Well, many of your higher end Wi-Fi 6 access points and definitely your Wi-Fi 6E access points are being shipped with multi-gigabit ports as the forwarding rates of these access points are already exceeding a gigabit. In addition, these access points will require higher rates of PoE, PoE plus, which is 30 watts and higher. So here we have the Ruckus switch portfolio. As you can see, we have entry level access through premium access aggregation all the way up to data center core with the power and feature of a chassis with the flexibility and cost efficiency of a stackable. And many of our switch models are purpose built for Wi-Fi 6 and beyond by offering those multi gigabit ports and higher levels of power over ethernet. So the reason we need to take into consideration our switching as well as our cable plant is this chart. The increasing demands of wireless networks are resulting in Wi-Fi refresh cycles averaging every three years. They're talking about Wi-Fi 7 already. However, the average switch recycle for enterprise is seven years and for education as high as 10 years. So when evaluating your current switches or upgrading to new switches, you need to consider that you'll probably need it to support not only your current Wi-Fi network, but at least one or more Wi-Fi refresh cycles. So we at Ruckus love to showcase our products. If there's anything you have seen today that you would like to have additional information or a live demonstration, contact the folks at PCL Solutions and we'll be glad to set something up. We could even set you up with some licenses, an access point for a free Ruckus cloud trial, or even implement a proof of concept. With that, thank you. I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Hans. That's great, Doug. Yeah, that was great. Presentation. Okay, I'm going to start. I love the offerings, uh, start potential uh, clients up on uh, Comscope Workers products. It's great. Okay, Frank, uh, my screen looks good, right? Yeah, you're good. Okay, perfect. Um, so this is where I like, this is the fun part, I would say. Um, so now that we kind of know about Ruckus and PCL and kind of the great offerings that we have, um, this is going to tie it all together and give you funding for those projects. Um, whether you maybe have budget already or kind of know about the CARES Act, the stimulus fund, um, this will be a comprehensive report. Um, that you can kind of utilize to gain additional funds. So first, we're going to talk about um, the stimulus fund and actually how much money is out there. Um, like I said, you probably already know about the CARES Act, maybe the Consolidated Appropriations Act and the American Rescue Plan, but there's additional funding to go along. Um, and there's also a ton of money out there. Um, the one that I always like to point out is the state and local government um, on the American Rescue Plan totals around $370 billion. Um, I've looked at the screen multiple times, I've done this presentation a few times, and I've spoken to a lot of end users regarding COVID funding. So when I talk about billions now, I'm like, oh goodness, um, 370 billion is a lot, but also is the 7 billion that came out in the Consolidated Appropriations Act, and also the 9 billion that was awarded for IT spending um, in healthcare. So a lot of money to go around. Um, it was passed with the um, goal to stimulate the economy and make sure that everyone who needed the resources and the funds um, for these projects, that it was available. So right now, there's a plethora of money. Um, and we want to show you with Comscope, PCL, and our third party how to obtain those funds. So let me switch over to the next slide. Um, these are the most common, um, I would say, um, within the Consolidated Appropriations Act um, that you can go for. So um, if you're with higher education, um, there's a relief fund for that. There's a relief fund for 
um, K through 12. Um, one thing that I always like to point out too, if you're a private school, um, maybe charter or Catholic, you also can receive funds um, through Ian's. Um, these funds are available until the end of 2023. So maybe you have a project that you're talking about now, but you don't want to actually implement it until mid 2022 or beginning of 2023. Um, this kind of timetable will help you plan that ahead and make sure that all the funds are available to you when you want to uh, move ahead with that project. Um, same thing on the next slide for the American Rescue Plan. Um, these funds are available now, uh, but they are set to expire before the end of 2023. Um, if you applied for CARES Act funding, um, you automatically are re-enrolled in the next um, second and third act with a Consolidated Appropriations Act and the American Rescue Plan. Um, but if you're not and you want to see what uh, funds are available to you, um, we can definitely go through this process that I'm about to show you and kind of get you up to speed on what um, funds are there. And so this is where Comscope comes in and PCL. Um, so we want to help you identify what funding sources are out there. Um, we also don't want to just give you the report and say, hey, good luck. This is your money. Um, go find it. We want to navigate all the application processes through the grant writing, um, whether that's applying and also getting your funds, making sure that you have that end-to-end -end support throughout the whole um, kind of task, I would say. So that's where we come in. And then it's as simple as filling out a one-page document. So we have this, um, Frank can share it from PCL or I can as well. We would just need basic information um, around the end user and then what you're looking to accomplish. So um, I always like to say grants fund projects, not products. So if you're looking to do like a one-to-one -one initiative in a classroom, if you're looking to do outdoor wireless for a city, um, we just kind of need to know the basics. So the grants office can come back, say, hey, this is what you're eligible for, and then give you that comprehensive report. Um, so we fill out the first page together, um, basic information within seven days, um, a report ranging from 20 pages up to we've seen kind of cities, um, to 200 pages. So it could be a little overwhelming. Um, within seven business days, we usually have that report generated. Um, we will then get in a call with the grants office who um, we've actually hired um, as a third party to kind of run these reports and make sure that you have the end-to-end -end support um, further than our um, knowledge as well. So they run it. The next um, call that we jump on will probably be two weeks after the initial documents filled out. We like to have someone from finance and someone from usually the IT department on the call to make sure that we're aligned. Because what we usually see is the IT department um, isn't the first one to receive funds, but a lot of the times these funds are set out specifically for the IT department. Um, so just making sure that everyone from the end users there to make sure everyone's on the same page when we're discussing, okay, which grant have you already been awarded? Which one um, are you looking to go for? Um, just making sure everyone's on the same page. Um, in the grants office, one thing I always like to mention is that they didn't just come about because of COVID. Um, they've been around for over 20 years and have done work uh, with grants, um, E-rate, and a few other things. So they're um, top-notch. Um, they have a great uh, team and a ton of resources as well to make sure that the end user has every, um, all the information they need moving forward. Um, and so where this works, this is, um, or how it works is it's all free to the end user. Um, and this program helps um, you success, successfully navigate the application process. Um, so with the grants office and with our team, uh, we wanna make sure that you can apply for the grants and then actually receive the funds. And so let me see, this is an uh, actual example of a report that was generated for a university. So what we see a lot of is, like I said, you probably already know that you have CARES Act funding or the American Rescue Plan, um, but maybe you've already used all that money. Um, this is where I think the biggest value add is there's additional funds like the Environmental Education Grant or the Humanities Connections Grant um, that are usually on a yearly basis. So say you use up all of your CARES Act funding, but your project, you want to actually install outdoor cameras, a few switches, um, a few other things that cost an extra 100,000. Between these additional grants that are probably on a yearly basis, um, you could fund those projects 
and then also have something to lean back on when the CARES Act funding is over. Um, so a lot of people now have a ton of money to spend. They maybe don't think this is as needed, but as we're looking out maybe three to five years, kind of future-proofing your network, we want to be prepared to, I would say, spend now, but also have some money later on. And this is just something um, that the grants office does. They give you the full comprehensive report of what's out there. So um, usually on that initial call, we learn a little bit more about the end user, um, whether it's a school district, um, kind of what their makeup of this student body, uh, maybe different area codes have different grants, um, what's worked for them in the past. Um, and it really is a great value add once you see the report and have that initial conversation. It kind of opens the eyes of the finance team and also the IT department to say, hey, we actually have a ton of money out there. We can fund everything that we want to get accomplished this year and even say the next three and four years out. Um, and like I said before, grants fund projects, not products. So these are some of the initiatives that we are seeing passed um, kind of through um, regarding K through 12. So the one-to-one -one student device initiative, um, remote virtual education, um, classroom technology, pretty vague, um, higher education. Um, if you want to I would say align your efforts towards workforce development, um, research infrastructure, and then student learning management. Um, these are all, I would say, examples of things that are getting approved. Um, but like I said before, the grants were approved in office because they wanna give money out. Um, they're not very tough to get, but if you have the right team involved, um, it can make that process a lot easier. And that's where we come in. Um, so if anyone has any questions or would like to get this process started, you can reach out to Frank or myself and we can get the ball rolling to um, kind of see what's out there for you. Um, does anyone have any questions? I think you can put it in the chat and then we can um, kind of go from there. But thank you guys all for your time today. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, that was terrific. We, uh, there's a few questions coming in. You can put them uh, in the Q&A or the chat. Um, well, before we get to them, I, I've been involved already um, with Hans in the, uh, of the grants office, and I've seen a number of these go through. And just with a couple of minutes of filling out that form, um, within a week, <laughs> I've seen over 100 pages, similar, uh, exactly what uh, Hans was talking about, or up to 200 pages of um, explaining what types of monies are available. So uh, it's an incredible program and something to be silly not to take advantage of. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get to a couple of questions. Somebody's asking what the uh, difference is, uh, or what is uh, what, what is Wi-Fi 6E as, uh, as compared to Wi-Fi 6? Yeah, I can answer that. Um, <clears throat> so the, the E stands for extended. So uh, for the first time ever, the FCC has allocated some new spectrum in a six gigahertz uh, band. Uh, up until now, for the last 20 years, we've been dealing with the 2.4 and five gigahertz band which is about 600 megahertz wide. Um, what the six gigahertz band does is they've um, allocated double that size to 1200. Uh, so uh, basically what that does is it, it gives us much more non-overlapping channels. It makes channel bonding uh, much more of a reality so that, uh, which is good news for high density venues like stadiums and convention centers. Um, with this new band and because of uh, the non-overlapping channels, it's going to be much faster and better performing um, for these uh, high density applications. Also, in, in addition to that, only, only devices that are six that are that are six E that are Wi-Fi six E are supported. So the network will not be affected by slower legacy devices. So uh, that's what the, the six gigahertz that Wi-Fi 6E brings to the table. It's going to be much faster, lower latency, less interference, because you have a big wide spectrum to use, and it's not going to be affected by slow legacy devices. Very good. Uh, I think, uh, Hans, you'll uh, be answering this question. Can the COVID stimulus funds be combined with E-rate? Yes, so that's one thing that I forgot to mention is that we're seeing a lot of school districts utilize E-rate funding. Um, so they're, if they're a 50% school um, and they want to, they have to cover the 50% um, that is funded by E-rate, 
the other 50% can come from um, the public funding slash COVID funding. So you kind of realistically get your refresh for free, um, potentially for the next couple of years. So yes, you can utilize both um, packages. Great. Um, someone's asking about PCL. Do they uh, provide a service to analyze my current Wi-Fi network? So the, uh, the answer to that is yes, we use a few different solutions that perform, perform site surveys upon request. They generate reports and feedback on uh, your current wireless coverage, heat map tools that show the strengths and weaknesses of signal levels, uh, signal to interface ratios, AP coverage areas, physical layers, channel bandwidth maps, uh, other requirements. I've seen some rather large files generated over 800 page documents, depending on uh, square footage. So yes, PCL can help in that regard. Uh, Hans, are there public pages? Someone else is asking, are there public pages available where we can see the amount of grants received by companies in the last few months or years? Yes, all that information is public knowledge. So um, most of it's at a state level. Um, it will be released, but you can see it all. Um, so if you're looking at a specific company or company um, itself, you can check to see what we've already been awarded and then also kind of give us a what's, what's there and what's to come. I'm sorry, I missed that, missed that last uh, part. Um, you can see what's there and also what's to come. So sometimes they divvy up money by, a, by the state government where say the American Rescue Plan um, is divvied up by state and then by individual end user. Um, so you have some visibility as to what's to come. Got it. Excellent. Uh, Doug, should, uh, should I still consider moving my Wi-Fi 6, even though most of my devices are Wi-Fi 5 clients? Yeah, well, per, per, the, uh, per the standard, of course, uh, Wi-Fi 6 is backward compatible. So your legacy Wi-Fi 5 and, and before uh, clients will work with a Wi-Fi 6 access point. Um, further, uh, Wi-Fi 6 clients will, are, uh, Wi-Fi 6 is more efficient, so it's going to free up more spectrum and improve airtime utilization uh, to the benefit of Wi-Fi 5 clients. So uh, Wi-Fi 5 clients will actually benefit from the new features of Wi-Fi 6. Very good. Um, someone's asking if um, what would be the best way to contact us about public fund su support. So I'm going to put it in our chat. Mine and uh, Hans's email addresses. You can uh, contact us uh, directly on that. We can help you for sure. And we're going to have to uh, respect everybody's time and bring this to a close. But uh, I want to thank Hans and, and Doug. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, filling us in on what's going on, exciting things with Wi-Fi 6 and how people can uh, secure some grant funding to make these projects uh, even more palatable. Uh, so thank you for uh, being here. This uh, recording or this, uh, this is being recorded and it will be available on our social medias, PCL social medias and an email will be sent out uh, post-webinar. So again, Doug and uh, Hans, thanks so much for uh, today. Really appreciate everything. Thanks for having us. And, and for well. all the participants, thank you for, for listening in. Absolutely. We'll see everybody soon. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone.